Lightning like Steve McQueen. I'm in the fast lane when the light turns green. And I built tough, I ain't nothing but grit. Cause I made rugged blood, sweat, and spit. Yeah, like a horse I fly. Gonna push yourself in for a bumpy ride. I like to play hard, but I work harder. And I weather the storm cause I'm built stronger. Hey guys, before we jump into the episode, I wanted to let you know it is brought to you by Denim. As a business owner myself, I personally know the importance of financial stability and preserving cash flow to help navigate through any freight market. With Denim's comprehensive service offering, you now have an all-in-one financial partner whose platform includes factoring, payments, freight audit, document collection management, and analytics, which help keep your business financially healthy and increase your team's time to focus on revenue-producing activities. You can also take advantage of Denim's free credit check, which they perform on all of your customers. And Denim will proactively reach out to you if they spot any signs of credit deterioration. Finally, Denim always pays your carriers first. As a broker, this is imperative to preserving your credit score in the market, which ultimately helps you become a broker of choice to your carrier partners. Are you ready to learn more? Visit Denim.com to schedule a demo today. Just do me a favor and let them know that the freight coach sent you. This episode is brought to you by SPI Logistics, the premier freight agent logistics firm in North America. For over 40 years, SPI has been diligently building the most successful freight agent network to provide first-class relationships for our shippers, receivers, and carrier partners. We are more than another transportation network. We are a dedicated team of professionals united by one singular purpose, and that is to expedite our agent's success. All of our agents are set up for success on day one, as they are provided with a full suite of support staff that is ready to assist them with everything from after-hours emergencies to financial and administrative needs on a no-fee basis. This way, you can focus on continuing to grow your business. There is no financial risk to start, and you have the ability to earn up to 75% in commissions. If you are looking to take control of your financial future and build your business with the backing of one of the most successful logistics firms in North America, visit www.spi3pl.com to learn more. Do me a favor and let them know that the Freight Coach sent you. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back. We are live. It's the Freight Coach Morning Show. Excuse me, the Freight Coach Podcast. See, I make mistakes still. Where We are the Freight Coach Podcast, and we are back. To you guys to uh, speak about some, I, you know, this is my favorite segment of the month. Honestly, you guys, this is our financial Fridays. Um, I don't want to waste any more time with it. You guys know the rest of the introduction. I know you're going to get value and you guys know you should subscribe and uh, share this out there to your network because we're going to talk more about, you know, kind of like what do you do if your receivables are aging and stuff like that. So we're going to continue to talk about the overall financial health of your organization. And as always, I got my man, Sean. With Dan, I'm back on the show. Sean, thank you so much for joining me here today. Oh, hold on. We just lost Sean. He will be back shortly, ladies and gentlemen. I promise you guys that. But we're going to be talking about um, aging reports here, okay? It, it's kind of getting to that time of the year where we are uh, entering, you know, what I would call, you know, as RFP season starts up, as, you know, People are kind of assessing who they're working with, what's going on um, out there, and you know, like, like, and then dealing with your receivables and everything out there is is starting to come about. I'm I'm hearing some things out there from some of my friends about you know their aging report is is growing and um, days to pay are starting to extend, and we're gonna talk about that here. Uh, we're gonna really break that down and kind of like how do you prepare for that in your organization how do you really get things uh you know in line here because i think that we are i don't want to call it like survival of the fittest or anything like that because i don't want to make it sound like i'm uh you know fear-mongering or anything like that but you know getting your your books in line to sustain this right because you know i think ultimately if we're talking about the market as a whole nobody actually knows if it's going to change when it's going to change or anything like that but you got to focus on like you know as a business owner or as a leader you got to focus on how do I improve things with what I have today, you know, and instead of hoping and wishing that things change, uh, you know, miraculously out there, you need to intrinsically look at how do you personally improve your current situation? Because what if it doesn't change or, you know, worse, what if it gets worse out there? And, uh, here he is back now, and we're gonna we're gonna really break that down. Sean, I was just kind of explaining everything about what we're gonna be uh, talking about here, man. I was gonna go sign language if you were gonna bring me on. I was gonna try and do my best kind of sign language <laughs> impression. 
<laughs> you should do that. <laughs> oh, I only know man. teacup teacup is is really all I got. So we need Dude, some I- we need some listeners, some sign language listeners to uh, help help me out. Yeah, all I know is how to drink coffee. Essentially, man, that's that's kind of my jam. I'm really good at that. That and talking shit. So, <laughs> so the best skills, only dude, the best. The best, the strong. And, and ironically, you know, we're talking about survival of the fittest here as well today. You know, it's it, it's kind of getting. I, you know, I, I don't ever want to sound like any of the stuff that I talk about is like fear mongering or anything else, but more of you know what I was saying is is more along the lines of like what can we do today to improve our business because like the you know the what if everybody's like what if the market changes or when is it going to change and ultimately it's like what if it doesn't what if this is the reality what are you going to do about it to improve your financial health of your business right now and if you were if you were listening to the reports call it the end of last year call it the beginning of this year Chris, all you had to do was wait three more months. Like, yeah. so if everybody is, everybody's been waiting three more months for about 12, 12 to 18 more months. Right. So like, you just gotta, you just gotta realize that like, you know, as, especially rolling into election season, especially yeah. rolling into kind of the lull after the holiday, you know, it's, it's hard to look at, look at it and say, you know what, it'll be fine by X or Y. Cause we've fallen for that trap way too many times. So just kind yeah. of sitting on our hands and saying, well, this will fix it. It's just not going to be the case. So I, I'm I'm with you. We've got to take some action here and and get comfortable in in the uncomfortable. So what you know? And and I wanna um I actually want to talk about something else here first because somebody commented on one of my posts here this morning and it was uh, the uh, talking about prospecting right and they're like the one of the objections that they heard here recently was are you even going to be around, right? Like how much do you even have the financial stability inside of your organization where I'm going to bring you on as a provider? Like, are you going to be here in three months, right? And I wouldn't, you know, again, I'm not privy to anybody else's internal conversations, but if you as a brokerage are thinking about that, right? Like if your receivables and all of that stuff are aging, it's only inevitable that your customers out there are also probably thinking like, damn, these service providers like, it's tough out there. Are they going to be around? What does their balance sheet look totally. like? I, I think that that's got to be a conversation that's being had out there. Totally. And like a thing that that we see a lot, um, I mean, we just, another report of a digital broker kind of yesterday, right? Getting into like a sticky situation with their um, with their kind of payables and their cash situation. It's, it's, it's not uncommon. I think uh, Kevin Hill from Brush, Brush Pass had a report that came out maybe a week or two before yeah. showing the decline of, of freight brokerages and, and authorities that are running inactive. Um, it's very fair as a shipper to know that your carriers whom you are working with through your service providers out there are going to get paid and, and yeah. they're going to go to work, right? And so- in the same way that if I was a fleet or or if I was a carrier, I would be thinking really closely about the type of brokers that I'm I'm going to want to work with and when I'm expecting to be paid for sure. Yeah. Um, just like we look at that for our our whole portfolio. Um, yesterday, uh, last night rather, we had a Denim's kind of quarterly client advisory board, and we got to meet with kind of ten of our ten of our largest clients. They're they're running the largest books for us, and um, they are being aggressive. And like that is one thing that I took away is that they're not going to like let the market happen to them, and they are being aggressive on the carriers that they work with, the customers yeah. that they're working with. They say this is just like we're in an unsustainable environment, and so if we just kind of turtle, you can only turtle for so long. And so they're getting out there and they're trying to make plays and they're trying to make things happen. And a lot of that comes down to you know what sort of foundation you're sitting on from a financial perspective and like how flexible you're able to be. Yeah. No, dude, I, I I'm right there with you, right? Like I'm I'm just, you know, maybe it's just because I don't process risk very well. Like I am just like all gas, no brakes, right? Like I'm just like CEOs, fucking, they're a different breed, man. Your people are crazy. Yeah. Dude, you're crazy I'm people. Like, I'm just like looking at it. And I'm like, all right, man. Well, you know, again, like if this is normal, if this is the way it's gonna be, like I don't have a backup plan, right? Like I like and I talk about this a lot, right? Like yeah. I can't sit here on my hands and wait for things to change because what if they don't, then another 12 months are going to pass by and then I'm still going to be in this exact same situation or even worse, I'm going to be out of business because I didn't take action where it's like, man, I just look at it as now more than ever. Like you should always be aggressive. 
All right. Like no matter what, you should always be aggressive. You should always be talking to as many people as you seem fit, right? Like I talked about implementing KPIs for yourself as a solo operator, you know, like how many sales calls are you going to make every day, no matter what, holding yourself to those standards and all of that, because it's like, I, I look at it realistically, the more bleak things get out there, the more and more people are going to step back and wait for things to get easy, right? Because that's ultimately where we're at as a society and an evolutionary period out here is, is man, you don't have to work for stuff anymore, right? Like it's easy to get food. It's easy to get shelter and all of that. So it's like when it boils down to it, most people are like, I'll just wait for the storm to pass. But like right now, like it's no surprise to me that your advisor, like who you were talking to last night, you said your top 10, but was it their, their large, your top 10 largest clients? Yeah, top 10 largest brokers. Yep. Yeah. It's no surprise to me that all of them are like, no, man, we're we're going harder right now because that's the mentality of the people who are going to continue to grow through a lot of this, right? Like they're not going to slow down and they're not going to let a couple of things out here continue uh, to to like hamper them from from growing. Yeah, that's that's totally right, and I think that there's there was a there was a sense of um yeah i'm i'm not waiting i'm 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 done waiting and the best businesses i think everybody's heard this story the best businesses are built in the worst times because yeah. you build a business around a poor economic environment and if you can be successful when the tides do turn and things do change you have just like all gas right all yeah. all gas no brakes dude and it's funny because like i'm uh, i'm reading shoe dog right now the story of nike um, which I would highly recommend everybody yeah, picks up and, and reads that book. And I'm at the point in the story where he actually just decided to call Nike, Nike. And, um, you know, talking about like the early days in there though, right? Like where it's like, they weren't getting any lines of credit. They weren't getting, you know, like they weren't getting, they weren't able to operate, right? They had no cash. They were a million dollar company, but they had no money. And, you know, talking about all of that and balancing all of that out. Right. So it's like, nobody's immune to this, right? Like ultimately we're all going to be faced with the situation where your receivables are starting to grow. Business is going to slow down. No one's going to extend you credit, right? Cause it's like, if you look out out there right now, even with the lowering of the interest rate here recently, I don't think banks are looking at that as a, Hey, let's wheels off. Let's just go lend and extend out a bunch of money at this point month, you know? So it's like, I think that we're, we're in a very unique time though, where it's like, how are you going to make do with what your current situation is. And, you know, so it's like, how are you guys working with it, right? right? Like when you start to see receivables go, like it was somebody who was paying in 30 days and now it turned to 60 and then to yeah. 90 or how, like, how are you guys assessing that? Very real situation. Let me get, um, let me get, get everybody kind of on the same page on a few terms, right? So um, DSO, days sales outstanding is, the number of days between when you have delivered the service and from when you get paid, right? So DSO is an important measure um, and it tracks actuals. Now, net terms is how long someone is telling you they are going to pay your invoice, right? So if you, let's say, deliver this freight um, today on the 27th, you invoice them on the 7th, they pay 30 days later, November 7th, right? You've got a 30-day net term. You've got somebody with a DSO of 37, right? And as far as um, pay performance goes, they're right on time, right? They get the invoice, they pay on a 30-day term, and they're they're in good shape. Um, if they don't pay right on time, there's another acronym I'll tell you, DPD or days past due that you want to take a look at too. So when you're saying um, the time frame of when someone pays is starting to leak, right? It's like starting to starting to age. That is when your kind of days past due metric is is really important. Now for us, we use things called aging buckets. So we look at like who is within zero and 30 days. Now many of you have factoring companies, you probably have access to these reports. Um, some of you don't and you might get it from your like accounting system or something, which would be great. Uh, but you have your zero to 30 you're 31 to 60, 61 to 90, and you're 90 plus buckets, right? Mm -hmm. And so those are all kind of DSO buckets or when you when you do the work versus when, um, when you get paid. And you need to keep as many invoices in that zero to 30 bucket as possible, right? 
and actively manage down that 31 to 60. Now, it also depends on your net terms. You have some people that pay on 60 days, some people that pay on 45. We can like talk about that. But um, the importance here is getting a good grip on when you can close that cash conversion cycle, right? And mm-hmm. so from the services delivered, your expenses are incurred, and then you collect and there's money in your bank account. That's that whole kind of cash conversion cycle that if you're in a high working capital industry, aka you're a freight broker, this is a really important metric for you to yeah. keep your keep your eyes on and, and wrap your head around. So how are you guys ass- like if if I'm, you know, you guys are working with me, you guys are working with Freight Coach Logistics, Denim's my factoring company, and I come to you and say, Hey man, I want to set this company up. They're a very recognizable brand out there but their terms are 180 days. Are you advising your clients at that time, like based on the size of their organization, like, hey, FYI, this is probably not what's best for you right now. Are you guys talking? Because like, again, you know, you want to talk cash flow, cash is king, all of that, everything you're describing right there. That's a very real situation that somebody's going to be bound to find themselves in, right? It might be, it might not be 180 days. It might be 120. It might be 90, whatever that looks like. Are you guys working with your clients and like bringing up like, Hey, I don't know if this is the right account for you right now. The thing that we talk about a lot is like consistency. Mm -hmm. If they're consistent on their terms, if everyone, if they're, if it's a 90 day payer and they're paying 90 days on the button every single time, no problem. You can plan for that. You can get working capital for that. You can bake rates into that. Mm-hmm. Your your clients that you that you have as a broker, your customers can can pay a premium for that, right? For that extended capital if they are reliable and consistent payers. The biggest worries that we get when we do this for a living are people who will pay 15, 27, 35, 40 46, maybe 31 again, 60, right? Like those sorts of people, they are clearly people who have unpredictable kind of pay terms are ones that we definitely recommend people stay away from because there's a level of uncertainty in the business. There's maybe like a lack of process. Maybe there's a lack of capital availability. Like those sorts of problems for me signal kind of a core weakness in the structure, financial structure of that of that shipper. Gotcha. So you guys are assessing them as you're like onboarding, right? Like you guys are probably looking at their financial history on their payables, i.e. the shipper, your customers payables out there. And if they're 90 days on the dot every single time, you're like, hey, that's a low risk that that'll be fine. There's working capital you can get. But you look for that inconsistency in the beginning where it shows like, hey, they were at 15, 15, 80, down to 60, back up to 80, down to 70. You're looking for that. And then at that time, that's when you're telling your customer, i.e. the broker, hey, that shipper is probably not going to be a reliable one for you at that time, right? And that's what I'm hearing here. Yeah. And and we'll communicate that through our credit decisions, right? And so we'll have like, let's say a a broker client of ours has got a, a shipper that's sort of fallen into this like trap, right? Yeah. And so we'll call them up and we'll say, hey, we've got you on a $75,000 line with this customer. We're going to start to wind that down. We need to get this below 10 grand, right? Or yeah. maybe we need to get this below 25 grand or something like that to reduce our exposure and, and your exposure, right? Because like the factoring company and the and the broker are, are partners in this, right? Like we're both, we're both going to take some losses here if, if this goes sideways. And so we definitely look at it from the situation of like, we're trying to help you. Like we're trying to give you advice. And oh, by the way, we're also covering our behinds as well. And so yeah. like, let's work on this together to make sure that you can get a book that's a bit healthier from a, from a cash flow standpoint. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I, I think that, you know, is there a time of year, Sean, when receivables like historically start aging every year or is that complete? Like it just depends on the, the entire company's situation. Some so a lot of very large enterprises will have more like unique and bespoke and painful um pay cycles and pay terms and pay pay habits basically because they are the giant, right? And so people yeah. are going to just do what they say. And there are some companies that they only cut checks once a quarter or they cut checks twice a year, or you know, whatever the situation may be. And so you can expect to get one big hunk and check. 
and when when you get it and like in those sorts of situations it might show like a highly variable days to pay but in reality their process is to cut checks on certain periods of time and so it's really important to know your customer i know we talk about knowing your, your customer yeah. a lot but like it, it's it's really important to know your customer the most disappointed freight brokers that i come across are the ones who punch you in 30 day net term and they look for a credit line and then all of a sudden everything is all over the place Maybe it's 60, all of a sudden they're trying to figure out overages. Maybe there's like a chargeback situation. And the reality is they just kind of had rose colored glasses and they said, okay, great. And they got the line and they moved on. So what if, man, like I, I, I want to, to, to paint this picture a little bit further because, you know, that is the reality that most sales reps don't think about when they're closing new shippers, right? But there are a lot of, owners and leaders of organizations that hear that and they're like, this is why we only do what we do. So in the event, say somebody out there has a customer, they got $600,000 that is now 60 days past due. They were normally a net 30 payer. Um, but this is now to the point where this is becoming a pattern. It's not a one-time thing. Yeah. How are you guys as a factoring company, how do you guys go to your clients and work about A, reducing that amount or B, maybe talk about some alternative options with that customer? Yeah. When we reach, um, when, when we start to reach maybe a concerning level of like days past due for a particular, either a particular debtor or maybe a particular concentration of one of our broker clients has too many that all are sort of aging at the same time. There are things that we we start to jump on. One, we try to get the customer on the phone, right? Because we just want to get an explanation. Like, what, what is going on here? Like, what can we expect? How can we work better with you? A lot of times, it's administrative, right? It's like, maybe we don't have the right email. I didn't get you in the system on time. Denise is out on vacation. You know, there's a million things that could happen that are fair and reasonable and okay. Like, we can kind of make that stuff happen. But if the answer is like, yeah, no, guys, this is going to be a tough month for us. Wee, 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 right? Like we're getting really concerned about that. And so we start immediately, we cut the credit for that client immediately. So no new loads can be factored but by that um for that particular customer. And then we'll start talking about things like payment plans. Um, we'll start talking about things like like settlement opportunities, I hope not, right? Or um like those sorts of situations, so that we can start to ease down this balance. Um, and we've we've gone through it, right? Like every factoring company kind of goes through this. And it's not pretty. It's not fun for the client, for the broker who is feeling very stressed about yeah. this and and feel like they've done their part. It's like, what do you mean? You know, like we moved the freight for you. Yeah. Um, and so they, they get really anxious about this sort of stuff. The other thing that um, sticks out for me is like if you're not factoring this invoice and let's say you're a burger who's trying to do it on your own with your own capital, you can all of a sudden get into a really sticky situation if you've got, let's say, a small sum of money that you're keeping on your own and maybe you've got shippers that pay on 32, but you pay carriers on 25. So there's really a short float that you have to manage. But all of a sudden, if the shipper's paying 37, 39, 45, your short float is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, yeah. it's not so short anymore. Yeah, there, there's nothing worse. Uh, the worst thing I've experienced in, in business is what you're describing right there, is you put forth all of this work. You did everything right as a provider, and then you get stiffed out of that money. And then they go, but the, you know, the, the customer, your customer goes out of business or they just ghost you and you don't have the resources to fight it. That, that is the worst experience that I have, have gotten in my life, uh, in my business life, not my life, but my business life where I did it I, and I got burnt. You did the of, work. Yeah, yeah, I did the work. I did it. You know, I had it all. I brought up my end of the bargain. Um, and then it got to the point where I got ghosted, got ghosted. And then I went to my attorney and my attorney's like, Hey man, I know this is a lot of money, but it's going to cost you way more to fight it than it is to just not. And I'm like, fuck, you know, and there's no worse feeling than that. Um, and, but that's a very real situation that goes on. Fortunately, it was like around the five, $6,000 mark. So it wasn't five, oh, six hundred. Wow. But I That's was early. very fortunate, Jolly, right? Because right? like some yeah. of these numbers are fucking massive, man. Yeah. But Sean, I was like 
young in business. That was that very well have should have been five or six hundred thousand dollars. Five five thousand dollars where you're not making five thousand dollars is yeah. a lot. Exactly. Right. So it's like to put it into context, that, that's a very real conversation that's probably happening in a lot more organizations right now, not just brokers, trucking companies, shippers, manufacturers, whatever you want to call it. That is a very real situation that a lot of people find themselves in, you know, and there's a lot of shippers out there. Same thing. They're doing their job. Their products showing up to their customers and then their sure. customers don't pay them. Right. So it's like it's a giant cycle. But the, the, this is the real side of business that is not glorified out there in the world, you know, because nobody, I, I think most people just don't actually know, right? Because they've never actually experienced um, having this situation. But you, this is why working with Denim, working with Sean, working with a financial professional is worth its weight in gold, you guys. It's never, it's, it, it's not like, you know, again, and you also got to look at it like this, at least from my perspective, and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there's any factoring company out there that likes not extending credit and setting up a new customer, right? Because it's like, it's not beneficial to your business. Right. It would be very we're, beneficial. We're saying, we're saying no to revenue just like you, right? Yeah, exactly. So to put it into context, I think more people need to look at it from that perspective. Because again, I don't know any business out there that isn't in business because they like not making money, right? Like everybody loves to make money, but you also need to protect your organization. So ultimately, Denim, what Sean's describing here is, is they are another level of defense out there so it doesn't get to $500,000. And then you have to look at your team and say, I have to fire everybody out here because I don't have any money to pay you because we didn't get paid. That is a very real scenario that happens all the time. And it's happening more and more, right? And we saw it at the at the at the beginning, right? At the beginning of this freight recession, we saw quite a bit of it because people were were kind of sitting really lightly on their on on whatever kind of stockpile they had left. And it's it's been a continued flow. And like we've talked about, kind of especially freight brokers getting over their skis on carrier payments several times, and how how terrifying of a, of a situation that is. Because like if your customers are late, you're looking to pass these funds through to your carrier partners. All of a sudden, your days to pay as a broker is impacted. We mm -hmm. spoke a bit about credit last time. Um, for for those loyal listeners of Financial Fridays, they they recall a discussion about credit bureaus and credit agencies and how it impacts your lines. And so, all this stuff really can trickle down in a in a really surprisingly fast way, right? All of a sudden, you're on time. You're on time. You're on time. Oh shit, I'm late. Oh shit, I'm super late. Oh shit, all my stuff got shut off. I can't work with this factoring company anymore, right? And like a lot of a lot of bad kind of downhill stuff can happen if you kind of let the bottom slide out from underneath you. Yeah. And, and that's one of those things that, you know, again, and this is always the, you know, to, to tie in business development to this as well, you guys, like this is why you can never stop selling in any market. I don't know the exact number of businesses out there, but I would argue it is way higher than most people want to realize about how many businesses are in business because of one account, one customer that's keeping them afloat. And you Scary. are, yeah, man. And, and it is like, again, that's, if you want to know what Chris Jolly's fear number two is, is just that having all of my eggs in one basket and then not working to diversify that, right? Like ultimately when you're building a business, you're going to get that one key account that takes you to the next thing, but you can't stop selling at that time. Like you have to constantly be developing business. You cannot look back and be like, oh, I'm good. You know, these guys are going to be my customer forever. They're, they are until they're not, right? Like, because people run businesses and then, you know, there might be a shakeup or whatever. Like, you have to be, you have to be using these times to really dig deep into how your business is operating, who you're working with, how are you performing out there? Are you actually holding your people accountable? Because, you know, I, I, I truly think like we're, we're, I don't want to call it a dangerous time or anything like that, but that's just the word that comes to my mind here is, is it's a dangerous time because this could very well not change. This could very well be the market or it could very well get worse. We, nobody can predict this. And my, um, my buddy Gabe from rocket, I think he, uh, he tweeted this yeah. out just, just last week. Yeah. He's like, brokers should not be banks. So like, if you're a broker and you find yourself working like a bank, Get out of that business, right? Like you, you don't want to be in that business because, as you said, a lot of concentration risk, a lot of capital expenditure. The cost of that interest is not cheap. I don't care if you're, I don't care if you got a half a bit uh, or a half a percent rate cut two weeks ago. 
your money is still not cheap right now, right? Yeah. And so don't don't pretend like it is and all of a sudden we're we're flush again because that's that's not true. Yeah. No, I'm I'm right there with you, man. And again, dude, this is why I love having you on because like it's t- talking about like the actual side of of running a business, you know, it, it's easy to sit here and post about you know, hashtag entrepreneur and all that other bullshit that a lot of people on social media want to kind of portray out there. But this is a very real thing, right? Like, because it's, you know, it's where gray hairs come from. You want to know where gray hairs come from? It's this shit for sure. Straight up. You know, it's that it's not seeing your, your revenue grow, your bottom line still stagnant or it's dropping and everything else. Like this is, this is a very real thing. And I think that, you know, but again, like this is, why you need to have financial partners. This is why you need to get, you know, talk to your bank about lines of credit, you know, to help you, you know, cover that cash flow and and all of that stuff, you guys, because it's like it's so exciting when you get started. But eventually you're going to hit that point where you're like, fuck, this is a real business. Shit, I'm owed a lot of money. I don't have any money. I don't have enough cash to cover anything. And I got Thirty thousand dollars in my own bills due on the first, you know. So it's like it's a very real situation that a lot of people find themselves in. Let me give a shameless plug to uh, to the crew at Denim. Ready? Yeah. Industry average DSO is forty nine days right now in freight. Denim average DSO is thirty three. Give us a fucking call out here, all right? Yeah. Yes, that's a massive. I mean, sixteen days. It's huge. Profit. You know, talk about that, man. That that's a very massive thing. But dude, I love it, man. I love having you come on. I can't wait to our next conversation. Hopefully, you know, we have a little bit, you know, brighter thing to talk about. But you know, ultimately, you know, we're here to deliver the reality of life in the market, in business, and everything else, and especially on the finance side. And I I know I get a ton of value out of this. I know the listeners do, but I hope a lot of people out there actually understand what you're saying here and like the value that you are personally bringing to this show every single time you come on, man. So I can't thank you enough for that. I appreciate that. Remember, remember the most important word in cash conversion cycle is cash. So like you got to have money. This is, this is the way to get it. Dude. Amen to that. Sean, thank you so much. And we will be back on Monday. Yeah. We'll be back on Monday. You guys, as always, I know you guys got value in this one. Subscribe to the show, you guys. Share it out there to your network because if you see value, your network's going to see value as well. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And we'll be talking to you soon.